Hello friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Brandy and I am the owner of Boundless Treasures Boutique and today we are going to be creating this beautiful beautiful basket weave tumbler. We're going to be using some incredible vinyl from 311 Co. Have some amazing glitters from PDB and PG Olive Glitters. As always, feel free to check the description box for some discount codes to save you guys some money. With all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoy. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps my channel out more than you know. And of course, thank you to all my member mentorship members and my subscribers. You guys are amazing and I appreciate you more than words could ever describe. So with all that being said, we are going to jump right in and we are going to start with cutting this template. I'm going to be using Cricut Design Space and from here we are going to upload our design. Now I downloaded this from Etsy. I'll be sure to link where I downloaded it from and we are going to do a cut image and simple as that. We'll load it up and we're just going to make sure that we size it correctly. Um, for this fatty tumbler, it definitely was super, super big. So I went, uh, width was 11 and height, if memory serves, I think was close to eight and a half, um, maybe close to nine. And then from there we clicked make it and we sent it to our cutting machine. Now, what I would tell you is if you're doing this template after you've epoxied, please measure before you cut. Um, the epoxy can change the measurements of your cup. So anytime you're doing a template, always measure after you are finished with the set. For me, it was just sanding and prepping. From here, I picked... Um, premium vinyl and I did set the pressure to more because I'm going to show you a hack that I learned from diamonds and dust um, with contact paper. So here we are. Look at this gorgeous vinyl. Uh, this is from 311 Co. It's the Sunflower Burst vinyl. It is so, so, so stunning. Um, we are taking our contact paper and simply putting this over our vinyl before we cut out our design. Once I've got that all done, I am going to trim any excess that I may have uh, around the vinyl. That way we can get it onto our cutting mat and send it off to our cutting machine. Now, the reason this is genius, you guys are going to see, so you're going to have to wait for it, <laughs> but I'm just going to cut off the excess and I'm going to remove the contact paper from that excess because I don't necessarily need it for that. And we are going to trim up our edges. That way this wrap is seamless and ready to be applied to our tumbler. Once we have all the edges set up, as you can see, I've got my cup cradle here from Cami Page Boutique. I'm going to wrap this and make sure that it lines up evenly. Super, super important that your lines meet up because you will be able to tell. Um, even with the vinyl striping that we're going to do later on, you will be able to see if there is any mismatched lines. So just take your time with this. Um, I'll tell you, this is like super, super sped up. Um, I spent, I spent a fair amount of time cutting, trimming, and making sure that it was all evenly lined up. Now, as you can see here, what I'm going to do is I'm wrapping, I'm making sure that it's lined up. I'm going to grab some paint, painter's tape. This is going to help me start the hinge method on our cup so that I don't accidentally move it, anything like that. It just anchors it into, into place for me. Once that's done, we are going to carefully remove the backing. Now, again, take your time with this because what you'll see is where the cuts are. Um, it's battling with the contact paper and wanting to be laid down. But if you take your time, you go nice and slow. 
um, this shouldn't give you too, too many problems. Um, once we come around to the front portion of it, go ahead and remove that painter's tape. And I also lifted up a little bit of the com contact paper. You'll see here where it, um, it overlaps and some of the pieces get stuck to my uh, backing. I went ahead and just proceeded and then placed those as evenly as humanly possible. So don't feel like if they come off that you can't um, fix it. You definitely can. It just may take a little bit more time and a little bit more effort. Now, one thing that I wish I had done here, as you can see, there's quite a bit of overlap. Um, I wish I would have put painter's tape down to trim that off. Um, I did not. Um, that would have just helped my line be a little bit more seamless. So learn from my mistakes. <laughs> um, take the time, do the extra step. You will, you'll thank me. Um, from here, we're going to simply start removing our basket weave pieces. Now I did have my iPad up in front of me. You can't see it. It's out of, um, out of frame here, but I had my template that showed my lines, all of that, um, pulled up. Um, be careful when you're pulling up, as you can see, I, um, ripped a little bit of this vinyl. Luckily, once everything was said and done, it wasn't noticeable. Um, but just be mindful as you're peeling. Um, be gentle with your be gentle with your vinyl. Um, it's pretty durable, but it does not withstand everything. Um, so I am going to continue going through this and taking off all these pieces um, for my first color. Um, I would recommend again having the template up in front of you so that you can see that will definitely make it easier. And I would also recommend pulling it color by color. Um, this way your basket weave is going to um, come together quite nicely. I was worried that if I started pulling all of the triangles, it wasn't going to, or all the triangles, all the, the cuts that it wouldn't um, I'd lose track of where it was, things like that. Um, but this actually, um, worked out rather nicely for me was just to pull section by section for each color. Now for this one, I chose three separate colors. I chose mango sorbet from PDB. Um, and then I chose coronation and so grateful from peachy olive glitters um, but you guys you can use as many colors or as little colors as you want okay here is where this amazing hack from trina from diamonds and dust comes in we have this contact paper down over our vinyl so i can paint this as sloppily as i would like and fill in each portion without having to worry about being too careful with my vinyl and other colors. Um, this each section took me about three coats of paint, my final coat having crystal lac glitter glue mixed into it, as you can see here. And then I sprinkled my glitter on from there. Um, so what I'll tell you is, um, because you're working on a stainless steel base, unless you prep your cup first, um, I would definitely recommend painting it until um, that's pretty covered up unless you're using metallic glitters, which will um, have fuller coverage. Um, mine were iridescent and holographic, um, or not holographic, <laughs> iridescent um, glitters. So uh, I needed to make sure that I had a solid base stem. And I just repeated this for each of my colors. I went in with a pretty turquoise color and did coronation with that one. And then I went in with the, um, a purple 
and went in with so grateful from there. So I'm going to show you doing the blue portion too. I know that this is super repetitive, um, but once I started going, I figured it would be good for you guys to see me put two colors down versus all three of them. So here is this, here is the second color. And you're just going to repeat this process with the, um, the third color. Again, if you're just using one color, super, super simple. You don't even have to worry about any of this. Um, but I will let you guys watch this through and I'll see you back here at the next step. Okay, now is the fun part. Once your paints areas are dry, and please wait till they're dry, um, I promise you'll thank me, we get to start removing the contact paper and really getting to see this come to life. I'll tell you, this was like the ah moment for me. Um, I fell in love with this tumbler as soon as I started pulling up this contact paper. I could see these crisp, clean, sparkly lines, and it looked so good. Um, now, here's what I'll tell you. Take your time with this as well. Um, sometimes you'll you'll notice that the vinyl starts to lift with me. I found that if I went in at an angle um, and was able to lift it, that worked so good for me. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to go around the entire cup and you're going to remove all the bits and pieces of contact paper and then take it outside. I uh, spray sealed this with three coats of um, Rust-Oleum's three time um, clear matte spray paint. Um, you can use gloss, matte, anything like that um, to seal it in. But this way your glitter stay put. But you guys... <laughs> look at this. And this is before our striping. I was obsessed. Like, I don't know what on earth took me so long to do this um, pattern, 
but I am so happy it did. Um, once my sealant dried, I did take this out and apply two coats of quick coat from Alumalite, um, 30 milliliters, and then we moved on to the striping. So striping, I'm going into design space, I'm picking a square and I'm setting my measurements. Um, I did my measurements by, let's see, what was it? It was 0 0.07 is what I think I settled on by 11. And then I duplicated this 20 times. Um, and I actually had some lines left over. So 20 was the perfect amount for this particular, um, this particular template. Uh, once that was done, um, I chose to use Tech Grip crafts gold textured vinyl oh my gosh you guys if you're not using tech rep craft <laughs> please jump on that bandwagon they are so good um and then from here i sped this up a ton because this took me about 30 minutes to complete um but what i did was at first i started lining it like bit by bit and then i was like no 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 <laughs> this isn't going to work the way that I thought. So then I started following the lines and you'll see here all the way down until they were done. And I went, um, through the whole cup. And then after I had done that, I started cutting the over and under, and I thought it was going to be challenging to tell which color went over and which color went under, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Once you start getting your striping on, you're like, oh, okay, so here that purple goes under the blue. Oh, the yellow goes over this color. Um, so you're able to cut it accordingly. Um, and then you just trim in the sections that aren't supposed to be there. Um, once you're done with your vinyl work, please, please, I beg of you, please seal it. Um, I went in with my, um, polyurethane and I let that sit for about 30 minutes to an hour. And then she was ready for her final two coats of epoxy. Um, you guys, <laughs> I can't, I can't with this cup. It turned out so so good. I'm so, so happy with it. Um, and once I got the epoxy over this, um, line work, oh man, um, my heart was so happy. I told my husband I wanted to keep it. Um, I am not going to, it will be listed on my Etsy shop. Um, should you guys want to snag it up, <laughs> feel free. Um, but with that guys, I'm going to do a shameless plug here. Um, I would love for you guys to join my small little Facebook community. It is absolutely free to you. Um, I'll have it linked in the description below, but this is a great community for us to share all of our crafts, um, whether it's cups, resin art, whatever it is that you make. Um, perfect place to do that and share ideas. Um, and for those of you guys that are interested in taking your business to the next level, I do have a Patreon membership group. Um, it is $10 a month, but I would love to have you there and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you guys. Um, but with that guys, thank you so much for watching. If this inspired you to create something, please tag me. I love to see what you guys make, but with that, I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye now.